The U.S. was among the nations that used chemical weapons in World War I. Most of the world agreed to ban their use in 1993. Today, we are on the short list of countries that still have stockpiles, but not for long. The military is finally destroying the last of these deadly chemical agents. Scott Thuman takes us on a fascinating inside look at the risky process. In the scenic hills of rural Richmond, Kentucky, not far from the corner of First and Main, sits one of humanity's worst inventions. So dangerous, it's kept behind barbed wire and armed checkpoints in these temperature-controlled igloos. Just getting onto base requires a blood test, and I'm issued a protective hood and three needles to inject myself if all goes wrong. That's because this is America's chemical weapons stockpile, sarin, VX, and mustard agent. You can think of it in terms of a pesticide for humans, because that's basically what it is. It attacks the central nervous system, and a droplet that would fit on the head of a ballpoint pen, if that was to get on my skin, I would have about three minutes to live. That's local veteran Craig Williams. He's one of the reasons you now see this. After years of test runs, weapons of mass destruction are slowly and very carefully being opened on a highly automated production line designed and built for the job. For those who have to sometimes go inside, the danger is unparalleled, and an emergency team is always suited up. Anytime someone's in there working, yes. there are two people who are on standby ready to jump right. in. They just crash in there with a stretcher, throw them in it, drag them back to the airlock. and they. Chemical weapons got their first wide-scale use in World War I, and efforts to ban them began soon after that conflict. But it wasn't until the 1990s that a worldwide treaty banning their production was signed. For years, the U.S. has been slowly eliminating its stockpiles. These rockets and artillery shells in Kentucky are the most dangerous of what's left. The mustard agent is destroyed in this custom-built facility, the more lethal VX and sarin in another. We were allowed in during a practice run. The real star of the show here is behind me. It's this robot, which essentially is doing a job that you just don't want people to have to do or they may not be able to do. It's removing the sarin or VX agent from these munitions and moving on to the next stage. It's all done through a combination of more than a thousand degrees of heat, water, pressure, and a complex filtration system for the exhaust. Ron Hink runs the show here and has the resume to back it up, having helped clean up the reactor leak in Chernobyl and destroy chemical weapons seized in Syria. How much practice has gone into this? To exhaustion, I would say, <laughs> but yeah, we will run drills. We've been, you know, if you're out at the site, it's, it's very common to have a site agent release alarm go off and, and mask everybody. We train on that. We hope that never happens in real life. Because these are some of the most dangerous chemicals and chemical agents out there? Yeah, they were, they were invented to harm, right? So they're very good at what they do. Um, but we'd like to think we're very good at what we do, and we train to make sure that we are. We have many but how that should be done is where Craig Williams became a real thorn in the government's side. In 84, when they came here and said, you got chemical weapons, we're going to burn them. You got any questions? That's how this whole thing started. You were shocked. Oh, yeah. I mean, we didn't know. And so, you know, I raised my hand. In 35 years, I still got my hand up. Williams spearheaded efforts to make sure the weapons couldn't simply be incinerated and then exit smokestacks right next to a school. We will stop this incinerator. For decades, he galvanized the public and created enough controversy that the military changed procedures, devising a new, safer method of neutralizing the chemicals with more thorough testing. Safer, but never 100% safe for the workers in their $1,000 one-time use suits. You can hear me just fine at the moment, but you can't talk to me. How you feeling in there? <laughs> How you doing? Good. Yeah? Doing good. You're going to be eradicating the last bit of chemical weapons in the sure. U.S. You're on this kind of mission that's really significant? It is. You know, you think back in, in history mm -hmm. where this stuff was used, and I am now helping to destroy it. You know, so that, that's, a, that's a big thought if you just think about it. <laughs> 
overseeing all this, do you at times feel kind of like a nervous parent? Yeah, most days probably, yeah. You worry about the team, the health and the morale and just where they're at mentally um, like a parent. Um, at the same time, you can, you can be a proud parent watching what they can accomplish. So there's, up, there's both sides to that, right? There's ups and downs. So that's what makes it fun. Unique idea of fun. <laughs> when will they be done with the destruction? Well, right now the goal is the end of 2023, although there have been some delays and cost overruns. But just to give you a sense, eliminating this last bit of the stockpile from both Colorado and what you saw in Kentucky is going to cost over $13 billion. Whoa. Well, glad you made it out safely. Thanks. Great story. Thanks. <laughs>